In this episode, we're going to unbox the Quest Sport and the Quest Falcon. There are many unboxing videos for model rockets, but wouldn't you like a real rocket scientist's opinion of the materials and parts in the kit? Today, you'll actually find out the inside information so that you know what to look for when you get a rocket kit. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan, and yes, I am a rocket scientist. Today, we're going to unbox the Quest Sport and the Quest Falcon. Now, the reason for both of them being unboxed at the same time is because pretty much they're identical. Now, I've gone ahead and actually built one of each to show you what they look like. Um, here's the Falcon and here's the Sport. And you can see they look quite similar. The only difference in the kit is the length of the body tube. So that's why I can unbox one and it's the same for both rockets. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Quest Falcon, which is this one right here. And the first thing we have is the face card and it's kind of stuck in the bag. Okay, so again, first is the face card um, and it's a nice color rendition of the rocket. Um, it says it's a skill level one rocket, recommended for beginners, and I would agree with that. Um, as we look in the, the kit, um, the first thing we have is a paper tube. Um, this is a nice tube, nice quality, nice and white, um, which makes it really easy to draw lines on. And you will have to draw one line on it. Uh, no, actually you don't. Um, because what I was thinking was you're going to have to draw a line for the launch lug. But actually the launch lug is built into the fin unit right here. And so it's right here on the side. So you do not need a launch lug on and that kind of saves you a nice step right there. So you do get a plastic fin unit, which is this right here. And it's pretty resilient and durable. I like it. Um, it's a four fin design. Um, the only weird thing is in the instructions, they tell you to put um, instead of putting, you know, this little spacer here at the front towards the front of the rocket, they say put it towards the back. And it really doesn't matter. It could go either way. Um, so that's one option that you have is which direction you want to have it. Do you want to have it down or do you want to have it up? Um, it's either or. <laughs> uh, next we have the nose cone and this is a nice plastic nose cone. Um, it's pretty resilient, it's durable, the molding is pretty good. Um, the tube size on this is actually an oddball diameter. So it looks to be about a BT-55, but it's not. It's actually bigger than a BT-55. In fact, a BT-55 tube actually fits nicely inside as a telescoping tube. So if you actually had two tubes of this, you could splice them together with a BT-55 as a coupler, which is a, kind of a unique thing. So this is probably a 34 or 35 millimeter tube and nose cone rather than 33 like the BT-55. Also in here, we have our instruction sheets. And the instructions are okay. I've gone through them. Um, they're nicely illustrated. Uh, pretty good, well documented. You won't have too many problems uh, building the rocket kit. You also get a separate instruction sheet for launching the rocket. So this is all your, you know, how to prep the rocket motor, how to put the motor into the rocket, and then all your safety information here on the backside. So that is your launch instructions. Um, also in the kit, we have the decals, and these are pressure sensitive decals. So you do have to cut them out and then paste them onto the rocket. You just slap them on like a sticker. Um, they're, they're kind of a matte finish. They're not shiny. Um, so that's kind of like the only drawback that I see. Um, they give you, you do have to cut them out. They're not pre-cut out, but they give you these little lines around the perimeter on how to cut them out. Um, I just used the ones here on the top on this rocket. I didn't use all these extra ones that they provide as a bonus. Um, okay, also in here, 
we have our parachute and this is a 14 inch diameter parachute and this is a polyethylene low density polyethylene to be specific it's a nice color nice and bright um, it's like your traditional parachute if you've ever built a rocket before there's you should have no problems doing that um, these are the reinforcement rings they're square instead of round but that's okay um, on the on the pattern you can see exactly where they're going to go. They're going to go right here on a corner. That works well. Um, they give you shroud line string. Um, I really have no problem with the string, except for I found it to be a little bit on the short side. Um, you know, each the parachute string, if you fold it in half, and this is folded in half, it should be the diameter of the parachute. And that's from the flat side to the flat side. So, you know, if I go from this flat side to this flat side, it's it's about an inch short or two inches short. Um, other than that, it's okay. It's a little bit fuzzy for my tastes. Um, it's a little bit different from the string that we use at Apogee. Our, our string is, um, it has a special coating on it to make it so it's not so fuzzy. Um, as you can see, because it's fuzzy, it just wants to, you know, it's like Velcro with itself. It would like to stick to itself, but it's going to be okay. It's, you know, I've, I've used string like this before on parachutes and it will be fine. Uh, what else we got going on here? Um, this right here is the main engine mount. Um, and this is a 24 millimeter diameter engine mount. You can see that it is pretty pretty big so that's the engine size that it uses and then you got these big rings and you got an engine hook right here and this is a spring steel engine hook and it's a nice hook um, easy to use you do have to cut one little slit in for that little hook on the end to go on there it will go in through the hook and then and then these rings slide over the top like that and there's plenty of room for them there um, this one right here is the engine block that will go on the inside um, and then this will go in here and then your fin unit just slides over the top of the tube and just glues in the spot um, and you can see that this is kind of separate from that uh, once it's glued in it will be nice and strong but that makes it really easy to build I mean, as you can see how fast I did that, you know, as fast as you can glue it up, that's as fast as you can get this rocket together. This is going to be a really quick build if you use this engine mount. Now, they also give you a second engine mount, and this one is for 18 millimeters. And I've already gone ahead and put one together to show you what it looks like. But this, you know, as you can see, it's too small for the tube. So you have to use it with this engine mount. And unfortunately, here's the one downside I found to the kit. Um, you know, once you have that, the, uh, well, I can't put it in there because I would need a notch. Um, you, it does, they don't work together because now you got two hooks and they don't, they don't quite work together. So I would suggest don't even bother with the smaller engine mount building it um, it's not going to work for your kit if you want to use a smaller rocket engine in this kit i would suggest getting the estes plastic motor adapters because um, those will fit nicely in here um, and that's really the best way to launch this on a smaller motor otherwise you're stuck with 18 millimeter or 24 millimeter diameter motors um, so you can use an estes c 11, Anestis D12, then Aerotech has a whole bunch of 24 millimeter um, E's and F motors, which would be really good for this kit. Uh, this rocket, I would kind of think of it as a quick build, high flying rocket. I mean, this, this will be, you know, if you want a rocket that you can just take out build really quick and use big rocket motors, you know, 24 millimeter diameter motors in it. This thing is going to be perfect for that. 
Um, if you want to use 18 millimeter motors, like I suggest, get the Estes engine adapters. Um, that will fit nicely into this. Um, and then you can fly it with 18 millimeter motors as well. So you can fly it with um, B's and C's. And Quest also makes D engines that are in 18 millimeter diameter, which would be perfect for this kit. Um, also in the kit, we have the shock cord, and this is your standard Kevlar shock cord. It's actually a two part. So on the bottom part, it will be Kevlar, and these are tied together. And then the top part will be elastic, which takes up the shock. And on this one, I think I've already have it put together. Oops, there goes a piece. So in the rocket, we have the Kevlar, and then outside of the rocket, we have the elastic. And so, and then you can stretch it like that. Uh, and then the parachute is attached to the base of the nose cone as well. I put a little bit of tape around the base of the nose cone because it is a little bit of a loose fit, but that's okay. That's typical of rockets. You want to adjust the fit so that it's nice and snug without being too tight. So like this rocket, what my standard is, if you could turn the rocket over and the nose cone doesn't fall out like this one does, then you have a good fit. But if it, um, and then you, then you wiggle it. If it wiggles, if it will wiggle out, that's a good fit. Um, this one just falls out. So just wrap a little bit of masking tape around the shoulder and it will be fine. Um, so, um, so now on the sport kit, as I said, this is the exact same rocket, except it's shorter. The one problem with this rocket, which is easy to correct, is it's pretty unstable because it doesn't have enough nose weight in it. Because the, the Falcon is longer, it's nice and stable with a big um, 24 millimeter diameter motor in the back. But this one is pretty unstable. So what you'll do on that is on the back of the nose cone, there's a little hole. You can just take your knife and enlarge that hole and then drop some modeling clay in there. Um, I don't know how much to do off the top of my head, um, but I would fill up the nose cone, you know, about that far with modeling clay, just to give it a little extra nose weight so that it's not unstable when you fly it with D or, or even a C11 motor. Um, but again, this is be a nice rocket for big motors, that is a very quick build because of the plastic fin unit. And I, I like the, uh, the, the, the decor on this one. Um, you know, the, the yellow kind of looks like a bumblebee. Um, so that's the Sport. That was the Falcon. They're both nice rockets, easy to build. Um, again, the Sport rocket needs a little bit more nose weight to be stable, but if you put that in there, it'll fly just fine. Um, so you'll find these here at Apogee Components. Our web address is www.apogeerockets.com. Um, if you need any additional information, uh, visit our website or reach out and use our contact form and ask those questions there. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.